Inflation is the rate at which prices of goods and services rise over time. The United States government uses several methods to measure inflation, including the Consumer Price Index CPI, the Producer Price Index PPI, and the Gross Domestic Product GDP, deflator. Let's start with the CPI. The CPI is the most commonly used measure of inflation in the United States. The Bureau of Labor Statistics BLS, collects data on the prices of a fixed basket of goods and services purchased by households. This basket includes food, housing, transportation, healthcare, education, and other goods and services. The BLS surveys thousands of households across the country to determine what they buy and how much they pay for those items. The CPI is calculated by taking the weighted average of the price changes of all items in the basket, with weights assigned based on the relative importance of each item in the overall budget of households. The CPI is broken down into several categories, with each category having a different weight. For example, the housing category has the highest weight, representing about one-third of the overall index, followed by transportation, food, and medical care. The CPI is updated monthly and is released by the BLS approximately two weeks after the end of each month. The CPI is used in various ways by policymakers, businesses, and investors. One of the most important uses of the CPI is to adjust many government programs, such as Social Security and Federal Employee Retirement Benefits, to keep pace with inflation. The CPI is also used to adjust tax brackets, to measure the purchasing power of money, and to make investment decisions. Moving on to the PPI, the PPI measures the average change over time in the prices received by domestic producers for their goods and services. The PPI is published by the BLS monthly and covers three main areas, industry-based, commodity-based, and final demand intermediate demand. Industry-based PPIs are designed to measure the average change in prices for a specific industry. For example, the industry-based PPI for the pharmaceuticals industry would measure the average change in prices for drugs and medicines produced by domestic producers. Commodity-based PPIs are designed to measure the average change in prices for a specific commodity. For example, the commodity-based PPI for crude oil would measure the average change in prices for crude oil produced in the United States. Finally, Final Demand Intermediate Demand PPIs measure the average change in prices for goods and services used in the production process, as well as for those sold to final consumers. This category includes services, such as transportation and warehousing, and goods, such as materials and supplies. The PPI is used by businesses to set prices for their products and services. It is also used by policymakers to monitor inflation in the early stages of production and to help forecast future inflation trends. Lastly, the GDP deflator measures the overall price level of all goods and services produced in the United States. The GDP deflator is calculated by dividing nominal GDP, which is the GDP measured in current prices, by real GDP, which is the GDP adjusted for inflation. The resulting ratio represents the change in prices of all goods and services produced in the economy over time. The GDP deflator is used to compare the economic performance of different countries over time. It is also used to adjust economic data, such as per capita income, to account for differences in inflation rates across countries. In summary, the United States government uses several methods to measure inflation, including the CPI, PPI, and GDP deflator. These methods help policymakers, businesses, and investors make informed decisions about pricing, investment, and economic policy. The CPI measures the price changes of a fixed basket of goods and services purchased by households, while the PPI measures the average change in prices received by domestic producers for their goods and services. The GDP deflator, on the other hand, measures the overall price level of all goods and services produced in the economy. It is important to note that while these measures are useful for understanding inflation, they have their limitations. For example, 
The CPI may not accurately reflect the spending patterns of all households and may not account for the quality improvements in goods and services over time. The PPI may not reflect the prices of imported goods, which can have a significant impact on inflation. And the GDP deflator may not reflect the prices of goods and services that are not included in GDP, such as those produced in the informal economy. Despite these limitations, the CPI, PPI, and GDP deflator remain important tools for understanding inflation in the United States. By using these measures, policymakers and businesses can make informed decisions about pricing, investment, and economic policy.